amen and amen. Alan, that was wonderful. Thank you. Welcome this morning. Happy New Year. I guess you all missed the memo. Most of us had a, a worship service during the mimosa brunch at Stoney's this morning. So the second service, we'll, we'll, we'll catch all up. So anyway, uh, it's good to see you. We welcome those of you who are joining us online. We're going to be celebrating communion today. So if you have some bread or grape juice or a, a product of the vine and some bread that you would like to uh, uh, partake in communion, please join us. You are welcome to do so. Um, why are we going to sing some Christmas carols today? Well, because we're in the 12 days of Christmas. So Christmas is, of course, on December 25, and it goes to Epiphany, January 6th, the 12 days of Christmas. So we're going to sing some uh, carols today. I want all of you after the service to thank Susan Rosen, who has sweated blood over all these poinsettias. She's come down here and watered them and put them in the light and then moved them over to the west side of the church to get light the rest of the day. I mean, she's done phenomenal work. And the worship committee, they got all of this, uh, all these wonderful decorations. The worship committee is going to ask you to help uh, uh, put those away. We'll have a pack away party after worship next Sunday. And by the way, the Southmont uh, High School Choir is going to be with us next Sunday. So uh, that'll be a joy. Um, I think that's all the announcements that I have uh, on this New Year's Day. Uh, it's good to see you. Let us now join together in our call to worship. A child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests on, upon his shoulder, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let us stand as we're able for our opening hymn. This is a great Polish carol. It's hymn number 128. now our call to confession. Remember that our Lord Jesus can sympathize with us in our weakness, since in every respect he was tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with boldness approach the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins. O oh God, our past mistakes and current sins overshadow our future. Our choices and ways separate us from you. In your mercy, forgive us. Help us to change. Give us wisdom to know what is good and courage to do what is right. As we follow Christ into the new year, help us to follow his star and share his love. Amen. Before we get to our declaration of pardon, I have to tell you, I heard a pastor say that confessing your sin is like a car wash for the soul. And I don't know about you, but when we have that kind of silent moment, it just feels like God's forgiveness and mercy just washes through me. And I got a clean slate and I can step out again with the Lord's help and live as God intends, a life of love and faith and peace. So um, 
that moment is here. It's always here when we confess our sins. And that's maybe a good lead-in for this declaration of pardon that reminds us that God's mercy is mightier than our misdeeds. God's forgiveness washes away our failures. God's salvation is stronger than our sin. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far God removes our transgressions from us. So friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. We've got uh, the bullet, and I got a little bit out of order. We're going to next have special music, then we'll have our prayer for illumination. Let us join together in our prayer for illumination. O oh God, in Jesus your grace appears, bringing salvation to all. Help us to ponder your word by the light of your spirit, so we may welcome Christ and incarnate his way of love. Amen. Our epistle comes from Hebrews chapter 2, verses, two, or verses 10 rather, through 18. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of of the congregation I will praise you and again I will put my trust in him and again here am I and the children whom God has given me 
Since therefore the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same thing, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. And our gospel lesson comes from uh, Romans, or rather, <laughs> I, uh, boy, I'm, my brain must have been shot. So uh, it's actually Romans, folks. So uh, uh, it's Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Better be Romans 1, verse 1 through 7, because that's what the sermon's on. So anyway, listen now for God's word. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be a, an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which God promised beforehand through God's prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel according, concerning God's Son, who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it's New Year's Day, so Happy New Year. New Year, new you, new resolutions. You know, most of us make New Year's resolutions. I've made a few of them. Uh, but <clears throat> truth be told, most of us don't make those resolutions come true. But here's something that's already true. We don't have to make it happen. It already is. You are a child of God. God loves you, always has, always will. All we have to do is receive that love and pass it on. That's what a saint is, and that's what a saint does. A saint is not a perfect person. A saint, said the early church father, Gregory of Nyssa, who lived 1,700 years ago, Gregory said a saint is just someone who is God's friend. I love that. A saint is anyone who is God's friend. Well, how do you do that? Well, by being fully alive in love. Jesus said, love God, love neighbor. Love. God is love. Therefore, we should be loving too. So if and as you make New Year's resolutions to lose weight or go to the gym or quit smoking or drinking, yes, do those. All those intentions are right and good. But beyond self-improvement, we should commit ourselves first and foremost to simply become who we already are in Jesus Christ. And to do that, all we have to do is remember who we are and whose we are, and then act accordingly. We who belong to the God of love should just be loving, because that not only changes us, that changes the world you know humans when you get right down to it humans are kind and mean caring and callous capable of great good and great harm human nature is unchanging but you can change human history is tragic but it can be hopeful if and when ordinary people like you and me befriend God and live life God's way when we do that, the power of God is unleashed in life-altering, history-changing ways. Case in point, Vladimir Zelensky. Zelensky 
not too many years ago, was a stand-up comedian. He played a man on a TV show who was elected president of Ukraine. And then, and folks, you can't make this up, he was actually elected president of Ukraine. Zelensky pledged to fight the corruption of those who were doing Russia's bidding. But Mr. Putin didn't like that, so Pharaoh sent his army to depose Zelensky and bend Ukraine to his will. But a funny thing happened. A stand-up comedian stood up to tyranny. And Ukraine stood up as well to protect themselves and their democracy against an authoritarian thug who bombs hospitals and schools. Standing up for what's right, protecting the rights of free people against oppression, a stand-up comic has become this century's Winston Churchill. One person changing the world, turning the tide against evil because he's simply willing to do the right thing. Another person who showed similar moral courage this year was another quote-unquote nobody, a lowly intern named Cassidy Hutchinson. When powerful men did nothing, when powerful men took the fifth and refused to testify, a young woman, 25 years old, decided to stand for what's right. She took the stand in the January 6th committee hearings and did a remarkable thing in Washington, D.C. She told the truth. Hutchinson's first attorney, Stefan Pacentino, who, and folks, you can't make this up, was the White House, White House ethics lawyer, <laughs> told Hutchinson this. You aren't committing perjury if you say you can't remember. We want to focus on protecting the president. Let's just get you in and out. We know that you're loyal. We're going to take care of you. But Hutchinson knew that was wrong. She said, if I'm going to pass the mirror test, meaning if she was going to be able to look at herself in the mirror for the rest of her life, she said, then I knew I needed to do what was right. Maybe that's what our collective New Year's resolution should be as humanity. We should all make the resolution, I'm not going to do anything that would not pass the mirror test. This year, I'm not going to do anything that would make me ashamed to look at myself in the mirror. Here are two completely ordinary people, an actor and an intern, nobodies, who just did what was right. The Bible tells us over and over again that God works through ordinary people to confront evil rulers and right ancient wrongs. I mean, after all, it was a couple of rural nobodies named Joseph and Mary who gave birth to the Messiah in Bethlehem, changing the world forever. If you do what is right, you are probably not going to make the headlines, but you will make a difference. When you turn the other cheek, go the second mile, are willing to be last so that the last can be first, you're a saint. You're God's friend. You are part of the kingdom of God. You are changing the world. When you forgive somebody who shouldn't be forgiven, when you stand up for those who are being beaten down, when you're compassionate, generous, humble, and hopeful, you are the faithful fulcrum upon which and through whom God lifts our dying dark world toward God's living, saving light. Live in the light. Be the light. You are called, so be resolved. Resolve to be fully alive in love, fully aligned with what's right, fully animated and resurrected as a new creation in Jesus Christ today.
Friends, God now invites us, whether we're here in this sanctuary or here at home, to gather around the table of God's grace to receive the mercies that God seeks to give us. Please join me in our prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy and gracious God, it is good and right for us to give you our thanks and praise, for you are our God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. In your wisdom, power, and love, you called the worlds into being and placed the human family within the goodness of your created order. But our selfishness and rebellion and willfulness soon uh, got everything off track and marred the perfection of your creation. But Lord, you didn't throw us away. You gave us the law to show us how to live and the prophets to tell us what is right. And in the fullness of time, you came as Emmanuel, God with us in Christ, who was born in Bethlehem's barn, who ministered in Galilee, who died on Calvary's tree, and who arose that first Easter morning to bring us all into your kingdom of love and justice and peace. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would pour out your spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the body and blood of our Savior. We pray as well that you will pour out your spirit upon this entire globe, that, Lord, all nations and peoples may come to live together as brothers and sisters in the peace that you seek to give us all. We pray your grace upon all churches, that we may witness to uh, your grace and that we may share your love. We pray, O oh God, for our friends in Ukraine who are, uh, because their power grids have been bombed out, they're living day to day, trying to stay warm, trying to find running water. Lord, help them through the bitter suffering of this time. We pray for our friends in Russia. We know them. They're hosted them here in this church. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless the Russian people because this war isn't their doing, and that, Lord, you would bring this travail to an end and that you will bring a just peace rapidly to Ukraine. Oh, God, we pray as well for our community that you would bless us in this year, that you would help us to uh, be a welcoming community, that we can share our gifts. We're thankful for our mayor and for all our officials who serve. We pray that you will lead them as they help us to be a, a place of welcome and a place where everyone can thrive. We ask your blessing upon the schools, upon all who uh, study and teach and serve that uh, young lives may be shaped and young minds and hearts formed. Lord, we're Sad today for our Catholic friends uh, who are mourning the death of uh, uh, Pope Benedict. We would ask, O oh God, that uh, you would be with them and that you would grant them solace and that you would grant your servant Benedict peace. Lord, we pray as well for Paul Myrie. Today is the first day of his retirement. We're thankful for the ministry that he shared with his the church and with the academy, and we're thankful that he now has this time with Carol to be a grandfather and a, and a father and rather a husband and that he may do fun things and go ice fishing, which he enjoys for some reason, and that he may write the books that he seeks to write and that you will bless him. We ask, O oh Lord, your grace for all who are ill, remembering especially Aaron Yeager's mom, Margie, who uh, has a pulmonary embolism that developed uh, she is in serious condition now, and we pray that you will help the doctors resolve that condition and see her through so that um, she may uh, have full health. Lord, we come with many other burdens and concerns. We would ask that you would help us to surrender them before your throne of grace, trusting in your steadfast love and mercy. So in that mercy, now, Lord, please receive these, our silent prayers. O 
God, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. And I would ask one more thing, O God, that you would help us as this church to lift high the cross this new year, that you will help us be uh, salt and light and bread, and that you will uh, work your blessings through us as we offer our lives and our witness and our work and our love to you. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, after he had given thanks, Jesus took bread and broke it, saying, This is my body broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take together the bread of heaven. In the same way, after supper he offered the disciples the cup saying this cup is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins as often as you drink of this do this in remembrance of me let us take together the cup of salvation let us now join together in our post-communion prayer. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. O oh God, send us forth in your spirit to follow your star, to shine your light through our love. Amen. Let us stand now as we're able for our closing hymn, hymn number 113. Well, Jim and Alan and Jenny, I always—I have to tell you all, 
that idea about sitting on a cloud, plucking a harp and singing, and that always sounded kind of boring to me, but I think I could sing with you for a couple of centuries at least. So thank you for blessing us with your music this year. And folks, let us go out into this new year and let us trust that God is there with us. Let's be God's friend and share God's love. For as we do, we can trust that God will take care of the rest. Do what's right. Be able to look at yourself in the mirror and go forth and live. Let us all shine. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift you up and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.